Hello friends, welcome to our episode on bronchial asthma and homeopathy. What you can see is this beautiful landscape of Mumbai with this beautiful sea link which is there behind. It's cold in Mumbai. Kal Times of India ne temperature bola, it's about 11 degrees and that's so beautiful, it's so crisp and nice. Winters are very special in Mumbai and all over because there are lovely jackets, there is this good food and you, know, you want to go to these dabas. But during this time, there is also a very strong climatic change which takes place. So there is smog which is also there which is again a combination of pollution. Now in this season people also fall sick and one of the reasons is because of continuous change of temperatures. There is, there is pollution level rises, smog level rising and the most common affected is bronchial asthma. How you can deal with homeopathically? We are going to show it to you in this episode of ours. So we hope you enjoy the season, stay healthy and uh, see to it that there is less amount of pollution. And I hope you enjoy our episode on bronchial asthma. So live, learn, love homeopathy. To our episode of Studio Homeopathy on Bronchial Asthma. Bronchial asthma is basically a chronic inflammatory disorder of the respiratory tract. Matlab aapki saans ki nali mein ek tarah ki sujan a jati hai. Hawa andar ja sakti hai, par nikalna mushkil ho jata hai. Air is inspired and easily, but expiration is very troublesome. Patient experiences breathlessness ya saans phoolna, chest tightness, chhati mein akadpan, mehsus hona and coughing, khasi, which is particularly at night or in the early mornings. Many a times the patient experiences a whistling sound, siti jaisi awaz during breathing. On clinical examination of the chest, you will hear ronchi or in simpler form the sound is called wheezing. Now you see, the prevalence of bronchial asthma worldwide is around 200 million people and in a country like India, I think with high levels of pollution, hot humid temperature climate, uncontrolled smoke pollutants, dusty environments, improper management of domestic pet animals, for which asthma is seen in more than 15 million people. And this is the statistics by none other but the World Health Organization. Onset of asthma can occur at any age, but children and young adults are commonly affected. To be frank, the exact cause or to say a pinpointing a cause of asthma is difficult. There are a variety of host and environmental risk factors which can add on. Yes, very importantly, genetic predisposition. But something which is more prevalent in today's era causing breaking down of one's immunity is due to high stress levels. Basically, you may call it the intrinsic causes of bronchial asthma. और अगर आपको लगता है कि बच्चों में स्ट्रेस नहीं है अरे बाबा ये छोटे ब्रेन्स है ना दे आर मोर स्ट्रेस देन यू एंड मी नाउ बिफोर वी गो टू अंडरस्टैंड द मैनेजमेंट ऑफ एस्थमा अ कंप्लीट हिस्ट्री ऑफ द ओरिजिन ड्यूरेशन एंड प्रोग्रेस ऑफ दिस ब्रेथलेसनेस अटैक शुड बी टेकन इनटू कंसीडरेशन अ केयरफुल हिस्ट्री should be taken of an isolated wheeze, meaning whenever you examine the patient or whenever you are auscultating, you will hear a wheeze in the respiratory sound. So, when you examine your patient, you will hear the wheeze in the respiratory sound. Now, please note whether the wheeze is with dyspnea, whether the wheezing is always present. Even if there is no cold, if there is no cold, you will hear the wheeze in the patient's chhati. Lastly, most important aspect is regarding nightly aggravations. At night, this asthma is very triggered. As I told you, stress is one of the leading or the adding factors in human thought processes playing a key role. So in its management, a good mind history, a complete history can get you to the core of the disease. In my experience, when there is suppression of emotions, thoughts, when you cannot express outwardly, it culminates into a choked feeling triggering an attack of asthma. These people bottled up, you know, it's like a pressure cooker. Everything is inside, cannot express, all suppressed. But when it is expressed, either it is like a blast or it is kept inside for years and the suffering will continue. Now coming up to the homeopathic management of bronchial asthma. In my clinical practice, I basically divide treating asthma into two, that is the dry asthma and the wet asthma. You know, it becomes very simple to apply your therapeutics thereafter. 
are dry in the sense there is no such expectoration but a lot of breathlessness and wheezing yeah zyada karke balgam ho jata hai and you know and there is wheezing which is there which is more in in fact you know in when it comes to wet meaning the chest is full of flame and along with wheezing there are chances you may hear some crepitation in is condition mein chhati balgam se bhari hui hai and uske sath mein aapko wheezing ke sath crepitation ya ralls ki awaaz bhi sunai deti hai deti hai now when it comes to dry asthma remedies which are commonly thought is ipecac kalikam lobelia antimars and lastly sambucus for wet asthmatic complaints there are remedies like antimony tart kali sulf natrum sulf dalkamara stebium are extremely helpful now going on to explaining these remedies my first and the foremost remedy is is ipecac potency is made from the juice of ipecac root something amazing about ipecac is a juice was used in cough mixtures as an expectorant or an emetic from the 18th century till the early 20th century in 1965 the fda you know, the american uh, food and drug administration actually approved the sale of this drug in the us without a prescription now but for prescribing ipecac patient experiences constant constriction of chest you know with continuous suffocative cough with very long breaths now cough is so bad that borick writes that the child becomes stiff and cyanotic on examination when you examine a child of or a person of ipecac you'll hear a lot of wheeze in these patients now per is drug is main associated symptom is nausea nausea and nausea nausea with clean tongue is a key red line symptom nausea nahi to ipecac nahi exam mein nausea nahi bola to marks bhi nahi worse most importantly moist winds so you can understand how beautifully you know this uh, uh, the repertory and uh, the uh, materia medica of uh, ipecac is now moving on to kali ka now kali ka commonly is called is uh, or kali carbonicum commonly called as kali carb is made from the carbonate of potassium basically suited to fleshy aged people these individuals are very very sensitive to atmospheric change now they cannot tolerate cold weather at all you know these individuals they love the hot summer weathers you know you can see them having a beer sedentary life something like in goa hot sun you know jaise cold chalu hota hai you know these people get their asthmatic attacks now if you want to prescribe a kali carb three very very important keynote symptoms which dr allen writes is sweat backache and weakness inki complaints jyada karke 3 am ko aati jati hai that means it is aggravated at 3 am which is very early hours in the morning very similar to arsenic album like for inki a very typical si modality hai. the breathlessness is so much that the patient is unable to lie down so he is actually leaning forward you know few books also write uh, ameliorated by rocking kali carb has a very peculiar expectoration now this is something which you people should you know should understand that there is a very scanty expectoration you know which is throughout the night but as soon as morning comes the patient feels i expectorate much more on auscultation the chest is full of wheeze kali carb is very very useful especially in pathological conditions such as hydrothorax or pleural effusion now tf allen writes If you want to use kali carb when the vitality of the patient is low, meaning you know you have gone to see a patient at at a home visit and suddenly you see the patient is very weak and you know cannot cannot move about, use carbo veg instead. And once you feel that the patient is responding well, put him or her on KC or kali carb. Another important remedy which is very useful in bronchial asthma is lobelia inflata. Indian tobacco. So if not tobacco be potentized, kia to asthma me it is going to be helpful. to remember lobelia please remember it is very very similar to ipecac its sphere of action is same as ipecac acts on the pneumogastric nerve now please doctors these words are used in in our old literatures but pneumogastric nerve is nothing but the vagus nerve nausea vomiting and dyspepsia are associated in most of the complaints it is a very very typical symptom it is better by rapid walking now you can imagine aisa dekhe to someone who is breathless is aversion to walk fast but in this drug it is the other way around after all apna hindustani tambaku jo thera thoda alag to hona chahiye now many you know many of these lobelia complaints are due to alcohol that means drunkenness and suppressed discharges like sulfur in remedy relationship jiske uh, just you know it is said that jiske exactly something which is very similar just uh, you know very similar to ipecac but actually it antidotes ipecac so be careful when you know in case you want to change uh, uh, the remedies 
Now lastly, I would like to talk to one remedy which I have used in my clinical practice and that is antimony arse. Features of antimony and arsenic come together. Now here the patient has excessive dyspnea and cough. During attacks, the patient can hardly lie down. Yeah. As it is an asthmatic patient, they can hardly lie down. But in, in antimony arse, it is very, very typical and very classical. So tremendous exhaustion is the key symptom. Commonly triggered post-viral fevers. Like, you know, influenza, sardi khasi, kafi ho gaya. Patient has, patient has been sick for quite some time. And then a full-blown trigger of asthma has taken place. Antimony arse. An X-ray of the patient chest may reveal emphysema. You know, another very handy remedies are arsenic out, aconite and uh, Naxwamika. Now, now let's wet asthma. Pe. Now, further on describing therapeutics of wet asthma, one of my favorite and most beneficial in clinical practice is nothing but the most beautiful antimony tartaricum. Antimony tart, useful in typical barish ka mausam or rainy damp weather, something like July, you know, the way the monsoon is in July, you know, very antimony tart suits that. Now, in these patients, the chest is so full with mucus that the patient feels he would suffocate. Matlab, you know, the whole chest feels, the entire chest rattles. Commonly, the patient describes in Hindi as Puri Chhati, Dr. Saab, Ghar Ghar Karti hai. This is a very, very characteristic symptom when you want to prescribe antintar. When it comes to expectoration, there is hardly any expectoration. Patient keeps coughing, but when the patient expectorates, expectorates, he actually feels very much better. But it's very, it's completely temporary, of course, but it makes the patient feel much better. Now, complaints of this drug are usually seen in the rainy, damp, cold weather. Materia Medica describes as complaints due to residing or exposure for long in basement cellars. Now, basement cellars are basically underground storage places, especially where wine is stored. It's very common in places, especially, you know, if you go to Kashmir or Europe or Canada, when there are these basements, and so when it rains and it's cold, you know, the humidity is trapped completely in for a very long time. For making the totality more specific, Antim Tart has a very peculiar thirst for cold water, which is little and often and a, a very unusual craving for apples. Maybe ho sakta hai, you know, like in pahadi ilako mein apples jyada milte, maybe usli it there. So this is how you can remember your materia medica. Now, whenever you want to prescribe antim tart, please be cautious as William Boring very clearly writes, lower potencies given frequently usually aggravates. So the next, you know, so you should remember that these are very important when you know, whenever you want to prescribe and want to get results. The next remedy, very frequently used in rainy damp weather and it is one of my favorite natrum sulfuricum, a natrum sulf. Natrum sulf is basically suited to individuals, again living in damp houses, basements and cellars like the one I just explained and climatic conditions in natrum sulf has a lot of humidity. Complaints in these individuals start when weather changes from dry to wet. Now there is so much of an ailment from in, of dampness that in natrum sulf, you know, these people are so much aggravated and worse in water in any form, so much so that they cannot even eat plants which are growing near the water or neither can they eat fish. So something in natrum sulf is very, very peculiar is of this complaint which I just told you. In respiratory, cough with rattling in the chest is a classical natrum sulf expectoration has to be there, which is our thick ropey greenish expectoration no other remedy covers so much of a ropey green discharge like natrum self of course kali bai comes but natrum self uh, is a very characteristic with this kind of an expectoration along with breathlessness the cough is severe the patient actually holds one chest when coughing especially the left chest materia medica describes a typical sharp shooting pain more prominent in the lower left chest now for exam going students this is something which you people should remember these are the key remedies in rain. But what if asthma gets triggered in summer? Now, Kali Sulf or Potassium Sulfate. In this, the patient complaints come up during hot, warm summers. Easy way to remember this remedy is a Kali group, which is used for breathlessness complaints, mostly triggered in summer. And sulfur, again for yellowish discharges, so you can remember it this way, or mucopyrrolin discharges, or Kali Sulf, you should remember in that way. Other remedies, again useful in asthma, a pothos fetidus for asthma complaints worse from inhaling any dust you know at home when you are doing cleaning or when people tell you after cleaning I've got triggered so pothos fetidus naphthalene very useful in hay asthma especially you know I have got beautiful results when people working in fields or especially people coming from the side of Bangalore naphthalene has worked wonderfully for these people spongia asthma when it is associated with goiter dalkamara 
Humid asthma, again, you know, easy to remember, getting wet, patient has got wet in the rain and the asthma has got triggered, nothing as beautiful as Dalkamara. Sanguinaria, asthma ailments from strong odors like perfume, you've gone to a mall, you've tried some perfumes, come back home with a very strong asthmatic attack, please think of Sanguinaria for these people. Stebium, asthma, especially in children with oppression and great rattling of the chest. Plata Orientalis, one of the key remedies prescribed since, since ages for bronchial asthma. Again, it is made from the Indian cockroach. A very useful remedy. Now remember, when your arsenic totality, William Boric beautifully writes, when your arsenic totality fails, think of Blata. Usually with thick yellowish uh, expectoration, you should always think of this beautiful remedy of Blata. But please friends, be very careful when administering remedies from other kingdom, especially to our vegetarian communities, especially the Jain communities, you should be very careful. Now coming up to anti-myosmetic remedies, whenever you want to give it in, in asthma, Asthma is basically a psychotic manifestation. So remedies like Thuja and Medorhinum should be given as an intercurrent. Lastly, I would like to bring this to your notice that if there is an acute attack, something which can come very handy in clinical practice is using Sambucus mother tincture as nebulization. Take a nebulization pump, put some drops of Sambucus, little bit uh, with water and you know give as nebulization. It works beautiful. Few drops in the nebulization chamber helps the patient a lot. As a thumb rule, potencies are usually lower and gradually increase them because the patient is in a full-blown disease aggravated state. Please evaluate the mind and the physical aspect including the miasm of the patient. Constitutional medicine in the long run is the best for, for wonderful results. Now please examine, I'm telling you again and again, please, please examine and evaluate the clinical condition of the patient. A simple apparatus like, you know, the pulse oximeter can become so handy in knowing the oxygen saturation of the patient. You have to evaluate in this case that there is an acute exaggeration and, you know, there is a need of hospitalization mostly for oxygen supplementation. So please be careful. Lastly, I repeat again, evaluate the patient properly. Proper diagnosis is very important. If the patient is on steroids or continuous bronchodilators, be careful when withdrawing you know, these drugs. It should not land the patient with extra complications. Take help of a senior or professor for these kind of chronic cases. If there is anything, I think please uh, write to us. We have tried taking all your suggestions. You know, your suggestions we include kiye hai in, in our this presentation. So take care of your environment. Small initiative. Grow more trees, yeah? You know, proper disposal of the garbage, prevent, you know, because after all, all of this goes and gets burnt. So, uh, prevent burning of the wood, asking smokers to smoke in a smoke room, avoid hookah bars, regular check of pets, go to the pet clinic, get your, you know, your pet check, you know, if there is an asthmatic patient at home. Picnic pay, campfire kare to thoda sambal ke, because you know, it can affect somebody there. So, let's give all a clean and a healthy environment. I think together with doing all this, we can actually eradicate asthma. So, you take care and uh, live, learn, love, homeopathy.